I can't wait to try and get more into melee in this game. You've been in a lot of old world ruins. Are they all like this? Yeah, more or less. Oh, this is the burrower. I accidentally scanned this earlier. There was just a corpse lying around. I hate it when these dang corpses get secrets, in my way. But every place is different. Look at all this stuff for me to take. How how has the audio been with uh, Varl and Aloy talking and me fighting scrappers like during that melee section, especially Chad? Is it better now? People think it's doing better now. I turned it up by like two decibels on uh, on Streamlabs, and then we took it down from 100% in the game to 90% in the game. That machine we saw earlier must be on the move. Ooh, baby. Where am I going from here? Grapple? Oh, along the side. Oh, I hope they still have the slow motion jumps at spots. Alright, Chad is saying that audio is good, so hopefully we, hopefully we found a nice balance on the settings. It still sounds mostly the same to me, to be honest, but... Chad says it sounds better for him, there. that's better. Yeah, and they're getting stronger and more frequent. So the storms, the blighted lands, the rivers and lakes choked with algae. You were born to fix all that? Yeah, but I can only do it if I find that backup. I think we're winding our way around to the data center. We'll need to cut through that big building on the right out there. Dude, I am so excited to see how the story goes in this game. Like, what kind of antagonists we're going to run into? Because, like, the Shadow Carja are basically done. Helis is dead. Hey, Burl. There's data here. You scan it with your focus. Why, hello there. Um, this data mentions the tech that Farzina traded with Zero Dawn. It doesn't... Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Aloy. Sorry. Text log, data corruption partial, high council executive summary, negotiations with representatives from Zero Dawn have concluded, and I am exceptionally pleased that we've arrived at a mutually profitable agreement. It shows that sugar usually goes better down, but I can't read, that sugar usually goes down better than salt in contrast to the less tactful recommendations of certain of our more reactionary members. Why, chat, I can't read, I'm stupid. <laughs> I can read, but it takes me longer than it should. In short, Far Zenith will provide a copy of the prototype Homer archive already sent, 500 ectogenic chambers to be retrieved from storage at our Ninma facility, supplementary ectogenesis research reports. In exchange, Far Zenith will receive a copy of the alpha build of the Apollo database in the week prior to the Odyssey's launch. By our estimates of Zero Dawn's timeline, by then it should be a near complete repository of human knowledge. It should be noted that Dr. Sobek was very reluctant to agree to this, but I drew a line in the sand, making it clear that this was a non-negotiable term. As our faithful media representative, I will continue to run all public communications with Dr. Sobek's team while data corrupted. All right, so we actually, we heard about this in the first game a good bit. That's a cool little bit of overlap right there. Explain how they got it back up. I'll keep an eye out for more data. Dude, I, Varl, Varl, my man. Let's see. Huh. A lot of glyphs. I'll tuck this away to study later. Varl, my man, you weren't like my favorite character in Zero Dawn, but you were a cool character and I liked you, and I just want you to know I'm glad that you're here. I'm really enjoying having you around at the start of this game. I still really want to see my boy Aaron. I want to see Avad again. I want to run into some of the side characters like Petra, I believe her name was, from Free Heap. Uh, I really hope we get to see Euthid, and uh, I think I mentioned this before the YouTube video started, but I really want to see Euthid come back, and I can't remember her name, but the lady who told us to save Euthid, who also helped us save Edaman and his mother, like I cannot remember her name for the life of me. I think it started with a V, but I can't recall, but uh, I hope they show up again. Anything neat going on here? Or we got some climbing to do? Okay. I can't reach that ladder from here. Boop. Do you enjoy him or his beard more? It's a it's a package deal. It's a combo deal. Is that is down there where we were before? Are we like backtracking? What's down here? That looks like the way we came. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. A backup of Apollo, maybe. 
No, they're not talking about, uh... Aloy's not trying to get Apollo back. Apollo, I think, is gone forever because of Ted Faro, but maybe there's a backup of it somewhere? We're trying to get a backup of Gaia. So that Gaia can take control of her subordinate functions again and stop the terraforming from okay? breaking. Well, not going that way. Yeah. Guess we won't be going that way. Dude, the animations in this game are so smooth. My goodness, this game is... Oh, not again! Well, it is a thousand years old. Really should have gotten some janitors in here. Yeah, the backup of Apollo that they were talking about of the Looks alpha like build, I think. Oh, hello. That door on the other side's locked. There's another one of those glowing things by the table. Yeah, let's check that out. But uh, I'm pretty sure the alpha build of Apollo they were talking about was on the Odyssey, and since the Odyssey was uh, destroyed, the something. then that alpha build of Apollo should also be destroyed. Onzu. The Zero Dawn terraforming system, the brainchild of Dr. Elizabeth Sobek. Empowered by nine subordinate functions, Gaia, the core of the system, is capable of advanced planetary engineering, an obvious advantage to our space colonization efforts. Operation Phase 1. Establish an asset within Project Zero Dawn. Status complete. Phase 2. The asset will secretly beamcast a complete copy of Gaia and her subordinate functions to this facility's data center. If all goes well, Zero Dawn staff will remain completely unaware of the transmission. Risks. Discovery of this operation could result in Zero Dawn withholding the already negotiated Apollo database. Special care must be taken not to alert Travis Tate, the expert hacker in charge of Hades Protocol. In addition, extreme caution must be exercised in regards to Dr. Sobek herself. As one of the world's preeminent technologists, she may have instituted unforeseen security measures. A complete assessment is attached. This concludes the executive summary. I thought Elizabeth sent the backup here, but she didn't. Far Zenith stole Gaia. Aloy, why does that woman look like you? Uh, um, it's okay, bro. We look alike because... We're the exact same. Genetically identical. But she was one of the old ones. How can you be her? Because I wasn't born. I was made. By a machine. It's why I'm motherless, why I was cast out as an infant. I don't understand. What kind of machine can make a person? Remember when I said the backup? It's like a set of instructions. It's more than that. It's called Gaia. And for a long time, she cared for the world until she had to destroy herself. So she made me to bring her back. I'm the only one who can. And this place is my last hope. You once said the goddess spoke to you when you went into All Mother Mountain. Was that this Gaia? Yes, but she's not the goddess, Laurel. There isn't one. How can you be sure? It sounds like she anointed you with a sacred task. <sighs> I've had a lot of time to figure this out. And you will too, with the focus, but for now... The report said they were going to store the stolen copy of Gaia in the data center. So that's where we have to go. Okay? My man Varl has got to be going through so many different, like, revelations in his life right now. That's so much, so much intel to have to, to have to intake. It's crazy. All right, so we got a little bit of text here we need to read, it looks like. But, dude, that's so cool. So, like, Far Zenith negotiated for the Apollo bit, but when they knew that Zero Dawn was a thing, 
they were like, oh, dude, we want, like, we want all of Gaia so that she can terraform the world that we're going to populate in case we need her to. So they illegally copied her and, like, stole, basically copied all of her and, like, made a second Gaia and put her away. So we're trying to find that second Gaia to take the place of the first Gaia that had to sacrifice herself. Yo, that's so sick. That's really cool. I also like them bringing up Travis Tate again. They're, they're like, yo, we gotta watch out for Travis. That dude's crazy. He's a hacker and he's crazy in charge of Hades. Gotta watch out for him. Aw, oh, dude. I'm already just loving all this new lore they're putting into the game. So good. From F, a uh, word I'm not even gonna try and pronounce for the sake of everyone, including myself. Data corruption partial. To FZHC subject intel update. As seen members of the High Council, the latest intelligence report is attached. I expect I'll have another update at the end of the week. FY, attachment Elizabeth Sobek. All sources indicate Dr. Sobek continues to work obsessively on Gaia's development, pushing herself to psychological and physical exhaustion. Despite managing a large team, our sources note that she spends most of her time in isolation, which is consistent with her previously documented habits, detailed fully in her main file. Conclusions. Dr. Sobek remains unaware of Project Anzu. Sources will continue monitoring for any change of behavior. I don't remember what Anzu is in mythology. It's like a mythology thing, right? Because that's one of the, uh, the shadows from the Persona and SMT franchises. It's like that, uh, that lion bird thing in, uh, Persona 5 and several SMT games. I'm sure it's in other Persona games as well. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, Lion Bird. Did I say Tiger Bird? I meant Lion Bird. But, uh, I don't know what Anzu is in mythology off the top of my head. Aw, oh, Ted Faro, this scumbag. Mr. Faro continues to exhibit extreme guilt and psychological instability. His savior complex, detailed in his main file, renders him incapable of dealing with his culpability for the impending extinction of life on Earth. While his attention is largely preoccupied with the construction of Thebes, our source confirmed he recently coerced Hank Shaw into installing a secret back door into the Zero Dawn system, capable of superseding Alpha Authority. It is unclear what Mr. Faro intends to accomplish with this, but while it may pose a risk down the line to Zero Dawn's success, it should not impact Anzu's goals. Conclusions irrelevant to Far Zenith's aims, no further action necessary. They could have warned them about Ted Faro being a piece of trash. How dare they? Hank Shaw, the latest check-in with Mr. Shaw confirms he is continuing work in his role as a Project Beta of the Hades subordinate function and his connections to our organization have gone undetected. Okay, so it was someone... He, so, like, in the Zero Dawn hierarchy, they had, like, alphas, which was, like, Travis Tate was an alpha. Uh, that lady whose name I can't remember was, like, the alpha of uh, Apollo and whatnot. And I think Elizabeth was an alpha as well. So they were, like, in charge of, like... They were the top dog of each function, and then they had betas beneath them who helped them build it because it was too much for uh, one person to accomplish. So this Hank Shaw that like got in and copied, uh, copied um, Gaia and stole her basically, or like it didn't really steal Gaia herself because left the original Gaia, but made a second Gaia to take was working under Travis Tate. Okay, I wonder if this guy is related to the. Uh, the signal that, like, made all the subordinate functions go crazy in the first place when Gaia had to blow herself up, like, two decades ago in the game. I love this. He has demanded premium accommodations for his birth on the Odyssey, which was agreed to. Ah, okay, so he was doing it to get, uh, VIP treatment on the way to the new world. Mr. Shaw is on target to deliver a copy of Gaia after... Oh, we got to sit in my throat. After transmission, he will be removed from the equation prior to the Odyssey's launch. Refer to the action plan. Oh, they were gonna betray him?! They were gonna, like, get rid of him for some reason? Okay. Oh, chat is telling me that Anzu is a stormbird of Sumerian mythology. Thank you, chat. Huh. Look at that. Aloy, over here. I found something you could use. Aw, oh, dude, I'm loving all this Far Zenith stuff. Those Osra must have left us behind. Can't help them, but it can help us. I'm loving this bit with Far Zenith. Really? Going into... I'm sorry I'm pausing and talking so much, but I don't want them to talk over me while I get this point across. But going into Forbidden West, after, especially after just replaying Zero Dawn, one of the things I was most thinking of is like, dude, one of the best things about Zero Dawn is how they talk about the old world and what happened in the old world, and you slowly figure out like Zero Dawn and the Faro Plague and how all that played out. So I, I was wondering how in Forbidden West they're going to have that same kind of deal, because surely they're still going to want more lore of the old world to like build into the new storyline 
of this game, and I was like, how are they going to do that when they already covered, like, everything about Zero Dawn in the first game? It never occurred to me that they would have a uh, Far Zenith, which they had mentioned in small bits in the first game of, like, the Odyssey trying to take off and failing, that they would have that play such a big role, it seems like. I'm really loving it. Really loving it. The weapon. Thanks, Varl. We should keep moving. After you. Yo, what did I get? Frost, Blast Sling? All right, Ice is OP as heck in the first game. Blast Slings launch bombs that affect large areas. This weapon fires Frost Bombs. Use them against enemies to build up the Brittle State. While in the Brittle State, enemies are more vulnerable to impact damage. Oh, I gotta hold X to confirm. My bad, my bad. Oh, so this is interesting. So are they not gonna have, like, weapons that can do multiple things in this game? Did they just give you, like, more weapon wheel? Instead of having, like, four, and then, like, each one can do two or three different things. Instead, it's just like, hey, you just get, like, a bunch of weapons. Or maybe it's gonna be a mix of both. I mean, it looks like this weapon wheel does just have six by default. Very interesting. I haven't finished Zero Dawn, but wouldn't a complete copy of Gaia have a copy of Hades and its evil AI? No, Gaia... Gaia is... I don't know what they copied is the thing. I don't... I don't know what it copies, because Gaia is her own AI, and the subordinate functions are not Gaia. Each subordinate function is its own, like, miniature AI that's not as advanced as Gaia, and then Gaia, like, has control over all of them. Kinda. So, like, if they just copied Gaia, then they just have the AI that knows how to work the functions? She doesn't have the functions themselves, but if they copied all of the subordinate functions as well, then they would also have those. I don't know what all they copied. I assume that they also copied the subordinate functions, because otherwise Gaia doesn't really accomplish much. But, uh, but chat also makes a good point. Hades, a uh, good point. Uh, Hades was not evil back in the original game. I believe... It says in the first game that Gaia, uh, it was 20, uh, 20 years before Aloy, or before the main story takes place, it was right when Aloy was born, and Aloy is like 20 or 19 in the first game, that, uh, some kind of a signal made all of the subordinate functions become independent from Gaia and do their own thing, and Hades, because he became independent, was then like, my only purpose is to destroy, but because he's independent, not with Gaia, he doesn't give her back control to rebuild, he only thinks about destroying. So if they copied Hades back in the day, Hades would not be evil, if they even have a copy of Hades. But the original version of Hades is not evil, it's only when he gets separated from Gaia that he becomes evil. So even if they have a copy of Hades, he's not inherently bad. Because none of the subordinate functions were made to be inherently bad. Just like Hephaestus. Hephaestus is, like, pretty much evil in the, uh... In the Frozen Wilds DLC. But inherently, when Gaia is in control of Hephaestus, Hephaestus is not bad. Uh, well, I'm down here now. That was on purpose. So much chill water. We're gonna be. They're giving me all this ice to deal with the snake. I, I bet you. Back outside. Good. Did they say to take guy and all the sub functions? I must have missed that little bit right there. I didn't hear them say that they also copied the the uh, the sub functions. I thought they just copied Gaia's AI itself. It makes more sense that they copied the sub functions because Gaia doesn't really accomplish much without them. So yeah, they could they could have they probably had a copy of Hades as well. But like I said, Hades wouldn't be evil. Be the machine. There it goes, dude. The direction we're going. Great. Dude, I can't wait to fight this snake. 